Well, blessings to you on this Friday as we continue our uh, daily encouragement, and we are continuing in uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's uh, Life Together, and it is the day with others, describing what it means to gather in worship. And so he says in uh, the end of page 51 to the top of page 52, In truth, however, there lurks in this attitude, and that is an attitude of only getting a little bit of scripture, only as much scripture as you can handle, a grave error. It is really true that it is hard for us as adult Christians to comprehend every chapter of the Old Testament in sequence. Then this can only fill us with a profound shame. What kind of testimony is that to our knowledge of the scriptures? and all our previous of reading them. If we were familiar with the substance of what we read, we should be able to follow a chapter without difficulty, especially if we have, been, have an open Bible in our hands and participate in reading. But of course, we must admit that the scriptures are still largely unknown to us. Can the realization of our fault, our ignorance of God's word, have any other consequence than that which we should earnestly and faithfully retrieve what has been neglected? And should not ministers be the very first to get to work to this point? Do not object that the purpose of common devotions is profounder than to learn the contents of Scripture. That this, too, is profane of a purpose something which we must be achieved apart from worship. Back of this objection there is achieved apart from worship, there is a completely wrong understanding of what devotion is. God's word is to be heard by everyone in his own way and according to the measure of his understanding. A child hears and learns the Bible for the first time in family worship. The adult Christian learns it repeatedly and better and he will never finish acquiring knowledge of its story. I think back on this when I'm reflecting on his words of a professor at my seminary who held up the book and warned us and said, do not come to the day where you think that you know everything about this book. Or, he said, and this is even worse, that you are bored with this book and think that there are more interesting topics in other books. That was something I've taken to heart. Yes, I've had moments of familiarity or what I think I'm familiar with. And it's not that I'm going to go and research um, odd translations, although those can be helpful. There always are some interesting perspectives from other voices at times. And that does not mean that what I believe is wrong. It's just interesting to see how other people take verses. I brought up the example of the stories of uh, the birth of Jesus as prophesied in Isaiah. Isaiah originally was a prophecy about another child who would be born in David's kingdom. And it's really about the continuity of David's kingdom. And it is, finds its fulfillment really in Jesus being of the tribe of David and continuing it on. It's interesting to hear it from that perspective because a lot of times when we just see a scripture cited, once again, just one verse, we just assume that it's all encompassing and we forget to research the background of why it is a fulfillment, why the New Testament writer Matthew viewed it as a fulfillment, and why some might be a little skeptical of it. That doesn't mean that we disbelieve our old beliefs, it's just that we get more knowledge of what we believe. Aside from the fact, we need to keep on learning from Scripture. And even if these words become familiar, Let's find ways that we can dig deeper into that familiarity. And if we happen to find someone that takes a different take on it, maybe we have looked at that verse wrongly for many years. 
that isn't always bad to be corrected, no matter how old or how familiar you think you are with certain parts of the Bible. In fact, what I've often challenged myself to do, and I tell this to my confirmation students, please challenge me. And I always like to go to other churches, other denominations, even other religions sometimes, to not because I'm being wishy-washy, but to understand the perspectives of life, the perspectives of religion, even the perspectives of Jesus from those other faiths. I have not found myself to be persuaded to their positions, so don't view this as a way for me to get into deception. But it is always important to always learn and to continue to learn. And it starts from, and this is his main point, realizing that there is a lot of scripture that just isn't familiar to us. In fact, right now, I'm going through the book of Job. I thought I knew most things, and I'm still, even with my study of it, I still have not a great knowledge of it. But the more I have researched it, the more I continue to be amazed by the book. And I just give that as an example. There was many years I feared studying Job for fear that it would be bad luck or some other thing. But it is important for us to always admit where our blind spot is and to learn even from those areas that we're not as familiar with things. And so I'd say the admonition from this passage is simply read. And also, apply as you best can. Apply as best as you can to understand not only what the scriptures meant for the people that first heard them, but what they mean for us as a Christian believer. Because some books, and I'll admit, like something like Leviticus, might not be as applicable at first glance to the Christian life. But they can inform the Christian life, and they can help us grow in grace. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you on Monday.